Hey everybody, it's Travis speaking. Last time we took a look at creating drawings in Autodesk Inventor. As you can see, this is where we left off. Today I'd like to go back into our part and just show you a couple more features that you can use that'll help along with your modeling process. Um, we'll take a look at the model browser and this has become very handy when you're when you're trying to make some changes or actually leveraging the parametric aspects of Inventor. So if you grab any of your parts or I should say features these can be moved up and down on the tree. So when you highlight over one of the features as well you'll also see that it's highlighted in the screen. So this will help you um, more or less decipher which features you're working with but if you want you can also do things like rename so maybe you want to call this fillet um, we'll call this pipe fillet one and now you'll know that that's a specific fillet that you're after so if you have a part with a whole lot of features this can make things much easier another aspect of it we mentioned this at the beginning of this series was the end of part feature this can also be moved up and down the tree to show you the evolution of the part and if you're trying to emulate or learn the software sometimes you'll be doing this from sample files and this is a handy feature for just seeing if you're doing things right and performing the operations properly so I'll bring that back down to the end and my part isn't actually complete there's one more thing that I wanted to do to this I wanted to notch out some geometry right here at the end of the spoke so the best way to do this and the only way to do this to start is with a sketch so I'll go up to my create sketch button and I'll choose a plane and the plane that I want is the XZ plane because it cuts right through these spokes so I'm gonna choose that XZ plane and I'm going to navigate so that I'm looking right on it and now that I'm in sketch mode if I press F7 it's going to remove all that front facing geometry so as you can see it's got a little bit different texture on the inside where it's showing a cut line so the notch that I want to create will take a piece out of the spoke and to do that we're gonna create some sketch geometry so first things first I'm just gonna make that with a rectangle and I'm just gonna make it out here at some point so dimensioning is super easy with Inventor you simply come up to the dimension tool you click on the dimension you want to apply and you drag it off now I double click on the number and I type in 20 hit the check mark or just simply press enter and now I have a 20 millimeter line next I want to make that vertical line 8 millimeters so I'll simply do the same thing as before. I'll type in an 8, click on enter, and there you have it. Now what I want to do is make this this sketch component right to the end of my spoke. And then I'm going to use that as a profile for a revolve extrusion. So right now it's kind of difficult to see with my, my grid the way it is but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a d dimension and I'm going to use the zero the origin to make this appear where I need it to appear so I'm just going to place that dimension right now as it is and it's at 15.796 but I want that to have a null value so it lies directly on that plane so I just simply type in zero and it constrains it so that there's no distance between. Now what I'm going to do is use this same center point and this edge I'm going to drag another dimension off. Now I don't know exactly what the number is but I know I want it to be slightly less than 35 so I'm just going to type in 30 for the time being and see if it pulls it back far enough. Brought it back a little farther than I wanted to so I'm going to say 33 now we're getting a little bit closer I just want a small overlap so that'll work perfect 
Now that I have this sketch the way I need it to be, I simply press Finish Sketch. And now I have another sketch to work with. But what I want to do is revolve this and notch out these features. So I need an axis of revolution. So to create that axis is simple enough. I come up to the work features and I hit axis and then simply click this cylinder on the inside and it intuitively puts that axis in there. So if you'll notice, if I highlight over in my model browser, I have a new sketch and a new work feature, a work axis in the middle. The order of these is pretty important. If you were to place this on top and then try and do an extrusion or evolve using this sketch, it might not recognize where this feature is, this work feature. So what we're going to do is leave that where it is and I'm going to leave the sketch where it is and see if we've got it in the right order. So I'll choose the revolve feature. I'll choose my profile, which is the only one. And then instead of the join, I'm going to use the cut. And now it's asking, the last thing I need is to put in an axis. So I'll just select that axis. And notice how it creates this nice ring for me. Because it's a red tint, I know it's going to cut the geometry as opposed to joining it, which would be a green tint. So I'll switch that back to cut. I'll hit OK. And now you see I have a revolution feature in my model browser. Now the other great aspect of this, once I bring back to my drawing, that geometry has been removed and you'll see that in all my views, even that section. So that's a deeper look into some more work features and some of the ways that the model browser works. We're going to look into assemblies next and show you how you use constraints to bring various components together into an assembly file. Thanks for watching.